All right, good morning again, and welcome once again back to our Sunday morning Bible study. We're in the book of Romans this morning, and um, we thank God for all that he's done thus far, uh, and continue to allow us to be able to study the Bible and, uh, in the midst of all that's going on to be able to live out its creed. Uh, we study the Bible so that we can get a closer relationship with God and so that we can learn to have a closer relationship with each other. And so we have these Bible studies uh, Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Our women's Bible study, Coffee with Christ, is on Zoom Live. Um, Sister Maria Dwyer does that one. And I want you to know that all of our um, lessons, teachings, whatever it might be, is uh, once it's, whether it's live Zoom, or like now, uh, it's recorded so that you can go to our YouTube channel, which is CBC 1620 Live, and catch up on everything. And so, um, whether it's pre-recorded, Zoomed, or Facebook Live, this is the final resting place for all of these teachings. And then at uh, Wednesday, Noonday Bible Study, Living with Hope in a Broken World is our topic. Brother Jim Kennedy is YouTube pre-recorded. And then Wednesday evening at 6.30, uh, we have our adult Bible study. If you're still in the book of Revelation, we're on that, uh, Facebook Live on that and to get to our Facebook page is Community Baptist Church of Santa Rosa and share it with others, get others to come and, and also have Bible study with you and talk back and forth about what you think, what you believe. I want to be able to spark people's um, biblical uh, understanding and get people to grapple together with the Word of God and that's what all of our studies are about. Then, uh, then uh, Wednesday evening, uh, which is our children's uh, Bible study, is pre-recorded YouTube, uh, YouTube uh, channel. Thursday at 7 p.m., our adult special needs is, is uh, excuse me, special needs is by Sister Maria Dwyer. And then our children's Bible study on Wednesday night is by Genevieve McDowell. And then... Choir Bible study at, on Thursday is also pre recorded by our own Reverend Parker, uh, who um, does that one for the choir. So keep studying the Word of God. And then at uh, 7 p.m., we have another adult Bible study. First Chronicles, we're in. That's Facebook Live. Uh, come and join us at 7 p.m. on Friday. Saturday at 2 p.m., our um, biblical. Um, basic biblical orientation class. It's good to get back to basics sometime and know why we do what we do and the God, who this God is we serve and some of the blessings uh, otherwise known as benefits that we receive from him and what he expects from us. And so we want you to come. That's at 2 p.m. on Friday, on Saturdays uh, and it's on Facebook page. You can uh, or on Zoom, excuse me, that's on Zoom. We Zoom that class. So come on and join us. We want you there. We want to see you there on our Zoom class, Tuesday, Saturday, 5 p.m., Saturday night prayer. We're on Facebook Live, uh, Sweet Hour Prayer. Come pray with us together. If we pray together, we can stay together. We can stay unified in what we do. Uh, and then, of course, this morning, 9 a.m., uh, Sunday school, we're in the book of Revelation, we're on Facebook Live, I hope you invited some other people to come and uh, be a part of it so that you can talk about it later. And then at 10 a.m., uh, we'll have our service, uh, church service, which is also on the same Facebook Live um, uh, place, the live stream. And then our toddler church, which is pre-recorded, YouTube, uh, is posted after church service today. 
and uh, it's fun, it's funny, it has uh, humanity involved, it's, it has uh, uh, some, a lot of good stuff, and it also has some human error, and we like that. <laughs> and not that we always err, but it's always good to know that we're not perfect in what we do, and, and as polished as we're trying to get, and so there's always room for growth. But it's a fun and really uh, great time we have together doing that. And that's Sister um, Diane um, Edwards, who heads up her toddler church. And so we do thank God for those who continue to give to, to the cause of Christ and the expansion of the kingdom of God, especially during these tumultuous times that we are in. And um, so there's different ways of giving. You can give on our PayPal, through our website, uh, www.cbcsr.org. Uh, and you can also mail us uh, by uh, giving, uh, mailing it to our mail, the mailing addresses, one of two, uh, Community Baptist Church, 1620 Sonoma Avenue, or uh, Community Baptist Church, P.O. Box 4317, Santa Rosa, California, 95402. And again, uh, 1620 Snow Avenue, Santa Rosa, California, 95405. So there's two different zip codes. And uh, so we just thank God. And then if you have any comments or questions or anything that might be my concern, you can always email us. On our email address, cbc1620 at att.net. So those are the ways we contact. Those are the ways we want to stay in connection with you. Uh, as some things that will be coming up during the coming weeks. Uh, we want you to be involved. We want to hear what you have to say. We want to hear uh, from you. Um, whatever it might be. And so as we begin our Bible study today, we're going to have a scripture reading by Sister Maria Dwyer and our prayer by Reverend Parker, and then we'll begin in Romans, the third chapter. Good morning, everybody. I'm going to be reading uh, from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 14. So Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 14. There is a time for everything and a season for everything, every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What does the worker gain from his toil? I have seen the burden God has laid on men. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the hearts of men, yet they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there is nothing better for men than to be happy and do good while they live, that everyone may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all his toil. This is the gift of God. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. God does it so that men will revere him. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, once again we come to you with a bow down head and an open heart. Praying this prayer in the name of Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, thanking you again, Lord, for blessing us with another day. Father God, you've done it again. You brought us through a whole another week, and we thank you, Father God. We thank you, Father God, how you've watched over each and every one of us, O oh Lord. We just ask, O oh God, that you bless uh, our pastor, Father God. We continue to lift him up to you, Lord, asking you to continue to keep uh, your head protection around him and his family, Lord. We ask, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that Continue uh, watch over Sister Maria and her family, Lord, and, and Jim, Father God, and his family, Lord. Father God, we just ask this in Jesus' name. We ask, Father God, that you watch over everyone that's watching this morning and every CBC member, Father God, that 
that's watching this morning, Lord, we ask, Lord God, that you keep your head of protection around them all, Father God. Father God, we just want to say thank you today, Lord. We ask you to forgive us of our sins, O oh Lord, and they be many. Father God, we just ask, O oh God, that you continue to wash us and cleanse us in your blood because we know that your blood still has the power, Father God. And we want to thank you for that power, Father God. We want to thank you, for the, Father God, for having all authority in, in heaven and on earth here, Father God. We just want to say thank you, Father God, for just another day. Lord, we ask, O oh God, that uh, you give us an understanding and revelation as we dive into the third chapter of Romans, Father God. O oh God, just... Uh, Reveal to us, O oh God, what you would have us to know, Father God. Give us an understanding, Father God, O oh Lord, so we could just hold on to you, Father God, that we can continue to trust you more and more each and every day. Father God, we pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 As we begin to delve into this third chapter of the book of Romans, Paul is continuing to have discussion and also debates with the people of his era. And in verse 28 and 29 of the second chapter answers a large question or either is, he is not a Jew, which is one way outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter. Those who praise is not of men but of God. And so he goes on further to ask what advantage hath the Jew? Or what profit is there in the circumcision? These questions that he has posed to them what advantage, what special privilege, what superiority is there a benefit? Is there in being um, a Jew or being a Jew at this particular time? And looking back in verse 2 and 17, Behold, thou art called a Jew and resteth in the law, and makest thy boast of God, and knowest his will, and approvest the things that are more excellent being instructed out of the law, and are confident that thou art thyself a guide of the blind, a light of them that which are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which thou hast formed the form of them, and of truth in the law. And so he goes on to talk about how this has been distorted. And so he's asked them the question, what advantage there might be to being a Jew? And he takes it up further in, in the chapters 9, 10, and 11. But Paul wants to show that the, the Jew had an advantage, but it became his condemnation. Uh, what do you mean by that? It means that um, first of all, the word of God was committed to them. And these oracles contain promises yet to be fulfilled. And that's in verse 2. We can see much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. Now these oracles were um, uh, utterances of God. 
the writing of these oracles comprised in the Old Testament was given unto them, entrusted unto them. And so uh, what Paul was letting them know that uh, much every way which means that being entrusted with the oracles of God, all of the external advantages were not sufficient to save the soul. The circumcision, he talked about that, of the heart, not the external, but the internal. Mm -hmm. So they hold no real, they hold more condemnation for you than they do uh, advantage. Then he goes on in verse 3, he said, For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? And so here is a question that he asked them. For what if some did not believe? Uh, meaning, they, without faith, is to make it without effect. And so it's inefficient if you don't have faith to assume that um, God would offer them any kind of advantage any kind of advantage because of their unbelief. And we know that it's not, it's not by unbelief that you're saved. It's not by outward appearance and outward uh, uh, showing that you're saved. Salvation is from the inside and Jesus saves us from our sins. And, and let me say this from uh, verse chapter 1 verse 18. All the way to 320, Paul exposes the sin that Jesus died for. And, and so he exposes those things. And we kind of talked about that yesterday in our biblical orientation class when we went back and looked at all the things that sin had caused. Sin had caused blindness, had caused people to be without Christ, had caused people to uh, be against God. How do you be against God and win? Uh, people are blinded. People are without excuse. People are under the wrath of God and so many other condemned already. So many other things that sin brings. And so Paul is bringing these things out. If you notice, all back through those chapters, he's talking about all the sins that Jesus had to die for. All of them. It's not one. Oh, we can say, well, Adam, you know, Adam did start the process. And Adam, the penalty of Adam's sin is on us all. However, I can't blame Adam for everything. Uh, I, I, we used to have a game we played who, uh, we'd say, who stole the cookie from the cookie jar? And, uh, we say, not me. Uh, stole the cookie from the cookie jar. Number two stole the cookie from the cookie jar. And then number two would say, uh, not me. Number three stole the cookie. But even though I stole the cookie from the cookie jar, I was sitting there saying that I did. And so it's not the things that Adam had done, which is part of the penalty, but I'm under that judgment because of what he did. However, because of the sin that's within me, I still need to be saved and I still need to believe it's by faith. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. By grace through faith that we are saved. It's by believing that, that the grace of God is filtered from heaven onto our hearts and we're saved. And so he asked the question, for what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? There are people today who don't believe. 
They don't believe that they're under the wrath and the condemnation of Almighty God. You might not look like it today. But we're talking about eternity. Yes. Now, ad infinitum is what they're saying. From this point to infinity. There's, there's, from, there's a the point from infinity to infinity, which is God says, I am the uh, uh, Alpha and the Omega. Mm -hmm. From infinity past to infinity, you know, on and on and on and on and on. But there's a point in our life and in our world where we began the process. And so it's from that point to infinity. And that's what we're talking about. Where do you want to spend your <clears throat> eternal existence? Under the condemnation and the wrath of God? Because that's what you're dealing with. He's already judged. He's the judge eternal. He's already judged. He's God. And in that position of judge, he judges righteousness and unrighteousness and the Bible lets us know there's none righteous, no, not one. Amen. Amen. And so what chance do we have? There's only one chance. <laughs> one opportunity. And people say, well, you know, uh, that's just what you believe. That's what the Bible says. And let me say this. That's what God says because <clears throat> he's God. That's right. And, you know, when you really think about it, and to be harsh about it, God can do what he wants to do. I mean, it's not based on what you think or how you act. If it were up to me, you know what I mean? I'd probably be a little less stringent or whatever. But at the same time, it just depends on my relationship with you. If I didn't like you, you might not make it in. If I had an attitude against you, and I know it's the end right now. Like, oh, Rev, that's not cool. You do the same thing. Oh, yeah. You got people who say, no, nah, no, nah, dude. You're not going to make it into my head. So you might well turn and hit for that fire and all that everything else. So <clears throat> this is God. And his love and his grace and his mercy gave us Jesus Christ. But we have to believe. Yes. It's by faith. Faithing. We have to be faithers. In other words, practicing what we believe. Paul says in there, God forbid. Amen. In other words, um, what he said, no, never. That would be absurd. Amen. <laughs> what are you thinking? Of course not. Yea, let God be true and every man a liar. Amen. Let God be true. Um, faithlessness, uh, the faithfulness of God holds true even when men would be able to contend with him in court. A guilty verdict will be returned against men even if they become necessary, even if it become necessary to declare all men are liars. God is true. His truth is due to the fact that he's a perfect being and even though all men are proved at that point to be liars. Let God be true. become it's a condition he proves to be true it's seen that he's true it's written in the clearest meaning it stands forever let God be true that thou mightest be justified in thy saying and mightiest overcome when thou art judged. Judged. <clears throat> In um, Psalms 51 and 4 
says there. Against thee, thee only, have I seen, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and clear when thou judgest. Amen. You're not sinning against some. thing that doesn't have uh, the power or the wherewithal to cast an eternal judgment on you. It's against God Almighty, the judge eternal. And God is right in his judgments. He's righteous in his judgment. His wrath is righteous. You can't say that God is wrong because, you know, well, God is love. And he loves you so much. He does. Amen. And God is really, <clears throat> the, the liberality of God is that he loves you so much that he will allow you to go to hell even though he wants you to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. But it's your choice. It's not God's choice. He's already said, this is the way. Right. He's already said. Mm -hmm. So how are you going to stand on that day of judgment. And so. He says in there. You know win the case. When you brought them to trial. <laughs> yeah. You want to win the case. When you brought them to trial. <laughs> but to win this case. You have to have a good attorney. Right. And we had the best. Right. His only begotten son. The best eternal, eternal attorney that you can have. We have the best. <clears throat> then he goes on to ask, but if our unrighteousness can commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. The righteousness of God is trying to be used in reference uh, to his justification. Amen. So what they're saying is in an attribute of righteousness, which includes his faithfulness and truth, has God been called the inherent equity of God? The Jews' unrighteousness consisted of national disobedience to the law given at Sinai, neglect of the law that was illustrated all the way through uh, history, pride because they were possessors of the law, and ignorance of the spiritual meaning of the Old Testament scriptures. They even killed the righteous one. When we look at Acts 13 and 27, here's what it says. Acts chapter 13, verse 27. For they that dwell in Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophets, which they read every Sabbath, they have fulfilled them in condemning him. Talking about Jesus. They have fulfilled them in condemning him. And so they kill the righteous one, uh, Christ. Because what? They didn't, uh, they didn't know him. They didn't hear the voice of the prophets. Uh, and they read it every Sabbath. <laughs> People come to church every Sunday. They read their Bible. Mm -hmm. I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. I read my Bible. <laughs> I pray. 
I'm a good person on the inside. God has been good to me. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. But have you really faded? <laughs> See, I believe that there is faith. There's those who are faithers. And, 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 and fading is ongoing. And the question is, have you faded lately? And that don't mean just believe in Christ because James lets us know that faith without works is dead. What is, because he's not going to say job well faith, my good and faithful servant, a job well understood, my good and faithful servant, a job well known, my good and faithful servant. He's going to be saying, he wants to say, God, you want to hear job well done. That implies a doing. What are you doing for Christ's sake, for heaven's sake? What are you doing? You can't just sit on your pew and say, I'm a Christian. Because you sit in the third row and you come to church on Sundays. Oh, do us a favor. <laughs> I'm coming to church on Sunday. I'm doing the church a favor. I mean, I could be watching the football game. I could be watching yeah. old reruns of sports right now. I'm doing a favor. You're favored to have me here. On Sundays. <laughs> Ain't that nice? Uh -huh. I come in in my Sunday best. <laughs> I tithe. I give money. You can't buy your way into heaven. You tithe because you love the Lord and you want to be obedient to his word. Not because no. you're trying to buy your way to heaven. You ought to want to tithe. Listen, the tithe don't belong to you in any way. The Bible says the tithe belongs to the Lord. Yes. And it also says, how does a man rob God? And tithe and often. And we always talk about, and they say, man, you always talk about tithe and everything else. Because money is where y'all get hit the hardest. Start, yeah, you start talking about a person's money. Hey, you're off limits. You, hey, that's my money. I'm the one who worked hard for that. But 10% of that is God. He's asking for a tithe. He's commanding a tithe because 10% of that is his, not yours. And when you don't give it, you rob God because you're trying to keep something that you, you're taking from somebody and from something that's not yours. And that's the bottom line. Take it, leave it, do what you want to do with it. But the truth is, even with all that, he requires your heart. Yeah. He requires your obedience. <laughs> but if our unrighteousness can commend the righteousness of God. In other words, by us being unrighteous, doesn't that make the righteous look good? So aren't we kind of like making them look good because we look so bad? And you know, that's what we do. We compare ourselves to other well, I, you know, I'm not like so-and-so. I'm not like this person because, you know, uh, uh, they do this and they do that. Save for the grace of God, there go I. I can't condemn them. I am them. Is God unrighteous? <laughs> oh, wow. Who take it vengeance? I speak as a man. You better be speaking as a man on that one. <laughs> yeah, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't speaking. He said, I'm not speaking in the character of an apostle. I'm just, I'm just saying. Right. I, I, he was voicing those questions flawed human reasoning uh, for purpose of dealing with them to express his horror at the very thought of the possibility 
of God being unjust. He says again in verse 6, oh, God forbid, for then how shall God judge the world? That's far from us. That's, that's far. God forbid. God is just and righteous. His righteousness is isn't determined by the sin in itself, but by sin as God deals with it, whether punished by his wrath or pardoned by his grace. Mm. Mm. <laughs> That's good. Mm -hmm. Punished by his wrath or pardoned by his grace, the sinner is under divine judgment. He can claim no merit if God turns his sin to his glory. Genesis 18, 25 says, Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? He says, God forbid. For if the truth of God hath more abound through my lie unto his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? These questions seem to get dumber and dumber. <laughs> <laughs> Through me lying, uh, the falsehood, moral falsehood, and my unfaithfulness claims um, doesn't that uh, cause me not to be judged as a sinner? Why am I judged as a sinner uh, if when I do that it makes other people look good? falsehood of mine has made God's truthfulness more conspicuous. <laughs> uh, if my lie results in his glory by making God's truthfulness more obvious, why am I still sentenced? Why am I still sentenced at the tribe as a sinner? Wow. Why? Why indeed? <laughs> Verse 8, and not rather as we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, let us do evil that good may come. Whose damnation is just? This is just comical. This is, this is Roman's comedy minute. Uh, they're insulted by accusing me of, uh, of a slanderous claim because I do evil as a means to good so that good may result. Uh, you know, sometimes people talk about, well, I have to choose the lesser of two evils. Right. Evil is evil. <laughs> there is no lesser of two evils. Yep. Uh, that one just escapes me all the time. Right? <laughs> What's the lesser of the two evils? Why, why does it got to be evil at all? Right. Mine have a choice. So I went the lesser of the two. What then? Are we better than that? No, in no wise, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. Amen. 
No, you're not better. And even because you've been saved by the grace of God, you're still not better. Amen. You're still a sinner. Yeah. You're still under sin because salvation has not been completed yet. Yes, Amen. yes by receiving Christ, the penalty is paid for. Right. Yes, by receiving Christ, we have the opportunity to be able to overcome the sin that we wrestle with between flesh and spirit. Mm -hmm. But the culmination of the real salvation is going to be the glorification that we receive when we see him face to face. So we're not finished yet. So our salvation is not complete yet. Amen. We're on our way. That's where people get confused. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm saved, that's it. Really? God forbid! <laughs> Let me stop right there. <laughs> we'll pick back up uh, here on verse 10 next week because it gets better. Oh, yes, it does. <laughs> we love you and want to see Christ glorified in your life. Want to see others know the goodness of Christ. And so we thank God today for you as we pray. Father, we thank you for this word that we've received mm -hmm. and help our understanding that we might be able to utilize and apply it better to our lives. That these questions, even though they sound ridiculous, yet the answers are profound. Yes. And we give you thanks and praise for being our God, for your grace and your mercy, your goodness, your kindness, your wisdom, your understanding. God, just your there's so many things. Comfort our hearts and let us find joy because this is the day that the Lord has made. And let us rejoice and be glad in it. And we're going to rejoice and be glad, but also we want to acknowledge the truth of this day that we're in. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank God. Amen. We'll be back in about a few minutes here. Join us for church, won't you? God bless you.